the world's a dangerous place. Get the industry's original and most trusted laser sighting system from Crimson Trace. A laser and light systems will enhance your effectiveness and help keep you and your family out of harm's way. Tom's at the SHOT Show, but he picked out this special reloaded program just for you. When you hear the number, no need to call. Just sit back and enjoy the show, and Tom will be back live next week. Now, here's Tom. Oh, man, this is so much fun. Yeah, we're, we're kind of breaking new ground here or plowing up used ground. I'm not sure what we're doing here. We're, I'm visiting with uh, my friend Bud Feeney from Six Sour. We're, we're in the studio here for Guns and Gear Television. We're shooting some video of doing radio. It's kind of like taking pictures of two guys sitting in the corner talking. I don't know what we're doing. Yeah, here. it's great being part of an experiment. It really is. <laughs> not, not your first time to be involved in an experiment. You know, you and I have both been in this firearms business for a long time. For just a few years. Just yeah. a few years. I mean, you spent a lot of time with various companies, of course, with Sig Sauer, and you've got some new things for us to talk about. And we might as well just jump right into it because we always talk about, uh, we talk a lot about the guns. Of yep. course, we have great guns. Yep. Uh, guns are pretty much useless if you don't have ammo, and even if you don't have good ammo. Exactly. And so, SIG is, actually, I think SIG has lost its mind, frankly. <laughs> I, I, I think you guys have decided, well, we're not going to be just handgun makers. We're going to make rifles, too. And we're going to get into ammo and optics and who knows what else. Just silencers. silencers. That's right. Air but, guns. Air guns. But you're not just going to dabble in ammo. Talk no. us through where we were last year where we are now. No, talk about experiment. Maybe this was an experiment. I think, you know, I think you are involved in an yeah, experiment. Yeah. A year ago, we started with five pistol calibers, and we talked about it then. And we've expanded to 33 products right now, almost exactly a year later. Wow. We started with the V-Crown, our exclusive V-Crown bullet in the Elite Performance Ammunition, and we've, con we've continued Elite Performance Ammunition into ball ammo because, obviously, people are not going to use carry ammunition every day, and they're not going to go to the range and shoot up hundreds of rounds of carry ammo. It's just too expensive. Only you know? the government does yeah, that. Yeah, only the government. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's it. So, obviously, there's a need for the ball. And, and what we really strive for was to equal the performance, meaning – in recoil, in velocity, in uh, terminal downrange ballistics, keeping everything consistent so the shooter, it didn't matter what he was using. So you can switch back and forth and not worry about it. So you, you load up your the elite ammo, which is your carry ammo, your self-defense ammo, or home defense or carry. And then, although it's a good idea with any of your carry ammo to go out and shoot a magazine or two of that through your gun, make sure it cycles and all of that, right? Absolutely. Have to do that. Have to do that. Okay. But then you can take the ball ammo, which is practice ammo, full metal jacket for those who don't know the term ball, right. and you can go out and shoot that and practice with it. Now you're shooting the same SIG ammo. You can go back and forth and have a confidence or a comfort level that your practice equates to what would happen if you had to shoot in a self-defense situation. That's exactly right. And it, all the components, except for the projectile, are identical. We don't change and use a lesser powder. We don't use a different brass. We don't use different... All the components, except the projectile, remain the same and constant. What made SIG even consider getting into ammo? Uh, actually, two things. Number one, uh, you know, making thousands and thousands of guns per year, as we do, uh, we were shooting other people's ammo. Right. And, and we thought and believe that we could make ammo that was more applicable to our guns and give us better performance, specifically in AR rifles, specifically in AR I, rifles. I think what I hear you saying is, with good ammo, you can make your guns look better because you knew your guns were better. No question about it. So that was one of the driving forces. And the other were international tenders, where the world is shopping. Uh, everyone wants to do one-stop shop, one stop shopping. And, sure. And, yeah. and so they want optics, they want the rifle, they want the pistol to go with it, and guess what? They want the ammo to go with it. So why shouldn't we give them the optimal performance that SIG applies to all of its products? And, and we should point out, you're not like buying somebody else's ammo and just having them put your box <laughs> on this. Oh, no, 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 no. We've invested heavily in a reloading facility uh, with the most modern equipment, our design, just like the V-Crown is our design, patented. Your design for the factory, too. For the factory as well, yes. yes. Wow. We've, we've taken an, a, a, a tried and true method of loading, plate loaders for those who understand what that is, right. and modernized it to the nth degree. And, and you've got a strong, long background in loading ammo. I mean, you, yeah. you're not just hand loading, but yeah. actually making ammo by the millions of rounds. By the millions of rounds, that's yeah, correct. With uh, yeah. a big green company. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So, you got the, 
the handgun ammo, and you have not just like we had what nine and forty five. Now what do we have? We got ten. We've got ten millimeter, which is new this year as well. Right. Yeah, the ten millimeter. Boy, the interest in ten is just incredible. It is you know, something. It really is. It was a sleeper. It was people well, just people who distributed ammo didn't realize how much ten they were actually distributing because it you know sure it's not a thirty out six or a thirty eight special right but when they started taking a look at it when we talked about adding that as one of the products they they were surprised themselves at how much ten millimeter they were actually selling holy cow yeah well and of course you know Sig brought out the the P two twenty in ten millimeter this year exactly so that's uh, another acknowledgement of the popularity mm-hmm. of the ten and while you're on bringing we brought out three hundred we brought three rifles out in three hundred blackout blackout and guess what we have the ammo to go with it both sonic and subsonic okay so you brought out rifles in 300 blackout and then you said well let's make good ammo for it so you got the subsonic and the hypersonic and oh yeah it just happens that sig also makes silencers so doesn't that work nicely together so and again going back to what we talked about before is you know if you want to optimize the performance of your rifle Mm -hmm. with a can without a can with the ammo right we're the one-stop shopping so where are you going from here Oh, we, we, the line has to grow tremendously yet. We're going to go into hunting rounds for sure, okay? And that'll that'll happen in 2015. You'll start okay. to see some 308, yeah, some 223, and the additional, you know, 300. Okay. And then we have other things that I'm not going to start rumors about, not, not yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but oh, but no. uh, there's no telling where you guys are going to go. Yeah, there's no telling, right? You know, yeah. Maybe, maybe make it the kind of ammo that people are really looking for these days. Exactly. One never knows. One never knows. One never knows. <laughs> All right, so uh, is this available now? If you went into stores, can your stores order this? How, do, you, how do they get it? Yes. Yep. S- standard distribution through tier. We have in, through distributors or through uh, direct dealers or some of the box stores that our folks are used to shopping. So with. if you're a gun store, uh, put in an order with your distributor, mm-hmm. and you can get the SIG ammo. SIG ammo, absolutely. There you go. And the information on this is on the website, sigsour.com? Absolutely. Yep. There you go. But, Feeney, my good friend, uh, we have shot a lot of stuff together through the years. Yeah, we sure have. I am so glad that uh, you could be here. And we're going to go shoot some more stuff this year. How's that? Sounds terrific. All right. I appreciate that. All right. Don't go far. We'll be right back with more gun talk. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out, Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the SIG Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose SIG Sauer. Visit SIGSauer.com today. You're at a gun store and your phone tells you about hot deals. Want to know about special offers? No problem when you have Gun Dealio, the free app for your smartphone. Gun Dealio delivers the latest deals on guns, ammo, and extras direct to your phone. Don't overpay for your shooting gear. Get Gun Dealio. It's free at the App Store and Google Play. Trigger the deals with Gun Dealio. Gundealio.com. For 36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org. Hi, this is Sarah. A silencer is today's most popular firearm accessory because it makes shooting sports more enjoyable. You're able to wear little or no hearing protection, and it decreases recoil, offering greater shooting accuracy. It's perfect for hunters and those who want more social interaction during shooting sports. So why are you waiting? Silencershop.com is easier and faster than buying one off the shelf because they handle all the details, and they have the largest selection of top brands. Visit silencershop.com to find a silencer for your firearm. I'm just as good as these guys. When will I get my chance to prove it? Your chance is now. American Marksman is a nationwide series of target shooting competitions designed to give you your big break. Think you've got what it takes to go home with $50,000? Visit ammarksman.com to register today. That's ammarksman.com. American Marksman, are you the one?
we're back with you. We are changing seats out. We, we bring in chairs. We move people around. We got John Hollister. We got Eric Von Bossi. That's correct. How to do? I did good with you that. You did okay. very well. Okay, Thank you. both from Six Hour, but we were talking silencers and optics. That's correct. Okay, because we're talking about the this insane expansion of Sig is just unbelievable. What's going on there? I don't even know how you guys know how you keep up with stuff. It's uh, it's it's good bringing all the new people and the the, the expansion into air guns and optics and silencers and uh, trying to keep track of all the new people is uh, is something. <laughs> I guess it is. All right. So well, let's start off with uh, the the silencer, John. You got some in front of you here, and it's interesting. Sig chose to go with the word silencer instead of suppressor. Was yes, there sir. any thinking behind that? Well, it, it was originally a silencer. The Maxim Silencer Company started in 1895. Hiram Percy, Maxim. Yep, Hiram Percy Maxim. His father was Hiram Stevens Maxim, who was the inventor of the machine gun. His uncle was uh, Hudson Maxim, inventor of smokeless powder. We owe a lot to the Maxim family. Wow. And uh, in uh, 1909, he patented the firearm silencer. So it is a silencer. Uh, there's a lot of talk out there about it's not a silencer. It's a suppressor. It doesn't make it sound. It suppresses it. Um, that was an attempt to make it uh, a little less edgy right. and uh, bring it to the common person. And um, But I tell people it's it's the name of it, so that's what we call that, it. That's what it is. It's, it's a silencer. And we all understand it doesn't make it completely silent. It knocks it down. How does a silencer work? Well, a silencer uh, fits on the muzzle of the firearm, and as the bullet travels down the barrel and enters into the silencer and passes through it, there's a series of baffles on the inside that capture the gas, and they slow, cool, and redirect that gas until it is not going supersonic anymore Mm -hmm. and uh, is not burning. So it takes the boom out of it. There's really four noises to shooting a gun. Uh, one of them is the action noise of the gun. Every time we fire the gun, you sure. hear the action noise. Right. Uh, the second is as the bullet travels down range, you get the sonic crack if it's going over rule of thumb, eleven fifty or 10,050 feet per second. Right. 1,050 feet per second. Right, right. Um, you get the, yep. the impact of the uh, the bullet striking whatever the uh, the medium is, whether it be a berm or paper. Or steel or something. Exactly. Yeah. And then we get that uh, the gas escaping from the barrel. So it's not unlike a... A cork going out of a champagne bottle, where as the you remove the cork, you get that big pop. Well, that's bending pop, gases going out. Exactly, yeah. it's not the cork; it's it's actually the gases. And so, by controlling those gases and only releasing them when they're uh, slowed down and not burning, we take the boom out of it. So you hear all that other stuff. Is it fair to say a silencer is really just a muffler? It is a type of muffler, just like you put a muffler on your car. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, it, it kind of works kind of the same way. You got baffles in there, you got a tube, and you know it, it, it slows it down and knocks the sound down. How much can a silencer knock the sound down when you've got, I know it varies on the size of the silencer and the design and such. And the caliber, like in 22 is like your, I was going to say the best bang for your buck, but the least bang for your buck. Right. Um, in that we can get down uh, like a 41 decibel reduction uh, down into basically the slide of the gun. It sounds less than a pellet gun. Wow. Um, we have the MCX uh, rifle. Uh, which in 300 blackout subsonic with uh, one of our uh, 338 or 300 wind mag silencers on it in titanium, get that gun down into like 119 decibels. Like dropping the bolt on an air is 112 decibels. So it really is just not... And then it becomes ear safe. You can shoot these without wearing muffs at all. Absolutely. OSHA says that uh, hearing safe for impact or impulse noises, which is a gunshot, is 140 decibels. And as wow. just a rough rule of thumb, every three decibels you go up or down, you half or double the amount yeah, of sound. Yeah, it's logarithmic. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, three decibels is, is important. Ten decibels is huge. Forty decibels is unbelievable. You're just doing some really serious reductions. Absolutely. There. I tell people that, you know, when we're doing 10 miles an hour in the car, we get to 20, we're twice as fast. We're, we get to 30 miles an hour, we're three times as fast. We're, we're used to that linear scale, mm-hmm. and uh, but decibels are logarithmic. Yep, exactly right. So you've got uh, cans for 22s up to, I'm looking, 338 Lapua here? Yeah, we've got the 22 that does up to 22 Magnum. We've got 945. The 45, of course, can be converted to 940 and 45, our best-selling So you can cans. use a bigger suppressor or silencer for smaller calibers. You can put a 45 caliber suppressor on a 9, and that works. Absolutely. You just uh, take the piston, swap it over and the piston is what attaches it to the gun, and uh, you get great suppression out of that. And you can also use like a 300 wind mag uh, rated can and use it all the way down into 5.56 and a 204 uh, Ruger. Which is smart. That way you just you change your suppressor or your silencer onto different guns, and you don't have to buy. Although it's kind of cool to get one for each gun, but still, you, know, you start out by getting the most you can out of a purchase of a suppressor. It absolutely is. And, you know, people start out buying one or two, and, and that's their plans is they're only going to buy one or two because yeah. they're multi-caliber. But after you shoot a gun with a 
the silence run it, you never want to shoot a gun that's loud again. It's so true, isn't it? Yeah. It, it really is. Now, Eric, you guys have gotten into optics, and uh, I, I say that you know, SIG is a new company in optics, but the SIG optics team is not new to optics at all. Yeah, it's really not. It's a, it's a new group for us, but uh, our engineering staff and planning staff are all folks that have been in the industry for a long time with some of the really reputable companies that are out there. Right. So it is much different from, say, us dabbling in a few accessories like we had done years back. We have a full optics team, designers, optical engineers, electrical engineers, design engineers, and the support staff that goes with that to really bring that industry knowledge into Six Hour. You did some cool things. We were just doing some TV about that this morning, and you had all the stuff lined out. And you got this little bitty rangefinder that you're using out to 1,600 yards and beyond, right? That's correct. I mean that that's just crazy. You used to have like a have to have a big old huge instrument to do that. It, it, it it's really interesting. The consumer industry, electronics for TV, stereos, that type of thing, computers have really seen the benefit over the years with with micro re- reductions in microprocessors and okay. memory and all that. Um, in the sporting optics side, that technology is there as well, so it allows you to build in a much smaller form factor and a much faster refresh rate than we've ever been able to do in the past. Interesting. Now, you showed me something this morning I just thought was the coolest thing. You've got red dot sights that are, and I may not be saying this right, are they motion activated? Ah, so we, we do what we call it MOTAG. It's motion activated um, turn on and turn off so really it's a smart power management right and it's designed because when the gun's in motion or when it's in your hand you want the optic on but when it's in storage you want it to turn off automatically to save battery life and that again is just electronic technology that's really blended with the optic itself to to make it a much better performing platform so i I think in terms of a a house protection gun it's sitting there it's in a safe or a little you know locked up vault and Sight turned off, all right? You reach in, as soon as you grab it, you pull it out, that motion turns it on. It's on by the time it leaves your safe. So, wow. so the idea is to increase the battery life. You never have to worry about a dead battery. And just like a smoke detector, you would mention that during the... Yeah. Uh, a little bit earlier, you know, you should get into a, a, a reg- regime where you change the batteries out once a year. You'll never have a problem with it. Yeah, any uh, like I said, give, give your, uh, your optics... A birthday present on your birthday. Put new batteries in them. Yes, so sir. That way you can re- you happy can, optics. You can remember. Now your rifle scopes are so good looking. Obviously, I mean you guys know about the guts. You're, you're using good quality optics, and that's the part that people can't see. I always tell people, in a store, all rifle scopes look good, right? Very true. You hook them up. Go, yeah, that's good. It's clear. It's great. You go, yeah. What's that mean? How do you know? Well, you you pretty much got to trust the reputation of the company because that's really what you're buying. Well, we do, and we, we know the Sig Sauer brand, that is our brand equity. We're not going to do anything at all to damage that. So the internals, um, the, the quality of the glass and then the lens coatings are phenomenal. Um, you mentioned the outside exterior, and we spent a lot of time taking design cues from our core products, the rifles and pistols. So if you take a look at, say, the range finder, you'll have some horizontal lines on that. Those are very similar to the horizontal lines we have on the back of the slides for grasping grooves. Uh-huh. You'll see checkering that's very similar to a 320 frame or a 1911 frame. So we've really tried to integrate the look and feel so it says Sig Sauer since we're really in a position, a very unique position in the firearms industry where we can provide a complete system to the consumer, the firearm, the silencer, the ammunition, and the optics to go on top. Right. Um, it's really pretty unique. Give me an idea of uh, the range of the scopes that you're offering so far. Wow. Uh, so that's 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 interesting. So we use the, uh, the military phonetic alphabet. So the whiskey scopes are our hunting line, and we have two different price points, a mid-price point and an upper price point. The mid-price point are all a three-to-one erector set. Um, so when they mean an erector set, how much magnification is in that system itself. Right. And that's really the background of the optical system. So in our case, it, it would be a, a, um, a 3 to 9, a 4 to 12, those combinations. And, and we do offer a number of combinations in the, in the whiskeys. The whiskey 5 is a 5 times erector, so a 1 to 5, 2 to 10, that type of thing. Um, the difference between the price points, you might find a little difference in, in the quality of the machining. Um, uh, really, the, the big difference is in the, the quality of the lens glass and, ah. and the coatings that go on it. The mid-range scopes, phenomenal scopes, um, certainly a much lower price point. So mm-hmm. we're, we're trying to offer performance in, in a price point that really covers the full range of consumers that are out there. On, and on the rifle or on the tactical side, Tango scopes, we have the same thing. Um, the Tango 4 is a 4 times record, so a 1 to 4. 
and up, and then the, the upper price point scopes of Tango 6 are a six times record, so 1 to 6, 2 to 12, 3 to 18. Yeah, and 1 to 6 may be like the sweetest package ever. I mean, John Draper nodding on, yeah. He's yeah. in. I mean, he has a chance awesome. to play with it. I mean, really, 1 to 6. It absolutely is. You could do anything with that. Absolutely. Uh, you can use it uh, basically at zero magnification just like a, a red dot and, and then zoom into 6 power. It's awesome. It, it really is, and, you know, for a hunter, I think in terms of hunting, a 1 to 4 or a 1 to 6, I'm going to leave it on 1 all the time. And when I'm walking around, I, if something jumps up in front of me, you can make a real quick shot on it, both eyes open, just make the shot. If it's farther out, you have time. Absolutely. You know, you're not making a quick shot on that. You have time to crank it up, and, and you're good to go. And it used to be, I mean, 10 years ago, thinking about a six times magnification was really unthinkable. I mean, we just weren't offered that. And now you're doing one to six. That is spectacular. And the truth of it is, for everything, say, short of 500 yards, six power will take care of it. Plenty enough. Fair, fair enough? Yeah. Okay. So, all right, we're into optics, silencers, lots of guns, lots of guns, lots of new guns. We're ammunition, talking a little bit about ammunition. Guns. Oh, air guns. That's right. You guys got a whole line of, of cool air guns, too. We do, indeed. And uh, they're actually, they look like your other guns, so you could actually use your air guns for some sort of training and then switch to the, the live guns, right? Absolutely. There's a uh, MPX uh, air gun. There's a uh, 320 air gun. Right. Yeah. Man, I mean, and they shoot well, but they look good. And I will tell you, in the uh, the booth at the NRA show, in you guys' booth, the air gun area was crushed. Absolutely. I mean, there, there were people all over the place. I'm thinking, air guns? Really? Well, the other thing about the air guns is you really got to pick them up and feel them because they're solid. I mean, it doesn't true. feel not like plastic-y. a toy. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a good, solid feeling gun. Yep. You're exactly right. All right. So if somebody wants to get a suppressor or silencer, uh, they could do that in how many states now? Uh, there's 39 states that allow silencers uh, to be owned by citizens, and there's 34 states that allow uh, hunting. Uh, full game hunting was just approved in Ohio was the latest one uh, back in December. Right. Exactly right. So you can get your suppressor. And, and I'm here to tell you, if you want to start somebody out shooting, you take them out with a 22 rim fire with a silencer on it, and they are going to love it, and they're going to wonder after that, why do we use these loud guns? Why do we always use these things? Absolutely. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you being here. Oh, thanks, we're uh, we're having some fun. We're with the SIG guys. We're going to be talking about some more guns and ammo and other stuff. Don't go far. And by the way, if you want to check us out, we're on the YouTube Gun Talk channel, and you can actually see what we're doing here. This is a little bit crazy. No need to call, just listen. You're listening to Gun Talk Reloading. All right, back with you here in the uh, studio, the Guns of Gear studio. Don't forget, by the way, to uh, check us out, guntalk.com. On Twitter, I'm at guntalk. You can always shoot me an email, tom at guntalk. Dot com will get you in there. And, of course, we've got our uh, our DVDs, the Concealed Carry 1 and 2, the First Person Defender Show, and Gunfighting, Fighting with the 1911, all at ShopGunTalk.com. If you're not able to get yourself to a top-notch training facility, at least do some training. Get a DVD. Get, get what you can get because, you know, you start where you start, and then in the day you walk out of your class, you're competence level goes down day by day so you got to get a tune up it's just simple as that if you're serious about concealed carry if you're serious about taking care of yourself and your family you have to make that commitment all right all right we're sitting here with uh john brosser from sig and don you brought cool stuff man you got like props and toys for us to play with what do we have uh we have a p320 and we have an mcx okay start with the mcx because you got this folding stock that is uber cool yeah, one of the things that you'll first notice on the MCX is the fact that the stock folds. Um, in the rear of the receiver is a Picatinny rail. Mm-hmm. The, uh, now, and we ought to tell people that the, the MC, we'll tell them exactly what this is. This is a 223 carbine slash rifle. Well, it's not just a 223, it's also a 300 blackout and a 762 by 39. Uh huh. Okay. Because you can do a lot of swapping and change. I mean, it's, it's like a little erector set and you can swap parts out on it. Yep. Uh, you can quick change the barrel. There's two screws. You t- turn those screws loose. Uh, and the barrel slides right out the front, so there's no big barrel nut that you got to turn. There's no torquing that you got to worry about or any of that. Wow. Okay. And all right. So how do we end up with a folding stock on? So, well, some people would look at that and say, "Well, that's an AR-15." Well, it's really not, is it? No, it's not. Uh, the only thing you'll notice the same on an AR-15 is the uh, trigger and the selector and the mag catch. That's about it. Okay, but you can use AR mags in it. Yes, sir. You can. Okay. 
All right, so you went without the buffer tube. You, you've got this folding stock, but you have other stock options. Yes, there's five stock options that we have that fit on this rifle, and they also fit on the, the MPX, which is our 9 millimeter version. Right, okay. So what's this designed for? What do we do with this other than just go have a bunch of fun? Well, this gun was actually designed uh, for a DOD contract. It was set up to be a 300 blackout uh, compact CQB gun mm-hmm. with a suppressor on it. Okay. So, and we can do the same thing if we want to. Absolutely. That's the funnest way to shoot it. Yeah. Very good. Suppress that thing and go. So we can do blackout. We can do 223. And what's your... And 762 by 39. Oh, okay. Very good. All right. Now, we got the uh, the 320. We got to talk about that because you just went through showing me all about this pistol. I'm going to hand this thing to you because th- you, you can think and talk better when you got it in your hands. I know you do. That is true. <laughs> so, the 320 pistol available in what calibers now? Uh, it's available in 9, 40, 327 SIG, and 45. And 45. It is a totally modular pistol in a way that I've never seen before. In fact, has there ever been anything like that before? Other than maybe the 250 you had. Uh, the 250, that's really its uh, that's its predecessor. Okay. You swap out the grips. Tell me what you can do with this thing. Yeah, so the, the gun is very modular in the sense that it allows the shooter to change to their own fit. Um, what you can do is you can change the grip size being um, full, compact, carry, subcompact, or you can change the circumference of the grip, small, medium, and large, depending on the size of your hand. Okay, so you change the grip length depending on the concealability, what you need for that, Yes. and the size of it to fit your hand. Right. All right, but in the process of doing that, you also can alter the length of the gun. Correct. So the full-size gun gives you a full-size slide and a full-size grip. Mm -hmm. A carry gives you a compact-size slide on a full-size grip, so you get the mag capacity. A compact gives you a shorter grip, shorter slide, and then a subcompact gives you the ultimate in concealability with a shorter grip and an even shorter slide. I'm just sitting here kind of wondering if anybody's ever done all the permutations of the different configurations and calibers and everything. you got to have well over 100 options that you could put together with this thing. Yeah, we went through the other day, and we were looking at how many uh, different catalog numbers we have, and we're over 200 just on this one gun. <laughs> all right, so the, the value to somebody, though, they buy this. What's the benefit of being able to do all that? Well, what it allows you to do is, obviously, the caliber conversion allows you to do whatever you want for calibers. But right. beyond that, um, for me, personally at home, I have the gun in a in a full size, and I have it in a large grip. That fits my hand. Okay. But my wife wants to shoot. I can put a small grip on there that fits her. Mm-hmm. She also doesn't like shooting a full-size gun, so I can put it in a subcompact, which fits her the best. Now, one thing that we, uh, we want to talk about is the safety that's built into this gun. Talk about that for a sec. Yeah, um, this gun is completely drop safe right out of the box the way it is. There's no external safeties. You're not going to see a blade trigger. You're not going to see a back strap safety. Uh, they're not required. We're going to be looking to do a bladed trigger simply because people are used to feeling that and having that in their gun. Mm-hmm. So we are looking at doing that, but it's not required. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is when you take this gun down, there's no trigger manipulation. Okay, so you do not have to pull the trigger to take your gun apart. Correct. Okay, so basically you take the mag out and ensure that it's unloaded and go from there, and it's incredibly simple. It took like two seconds for you to do this on camera earlier today. And then when you do, you find out there's this little skeletalized modular component in the middle, and that's actually the serialized part. Yes, that's the frame of the gun. That's the beauty of it. So um, one of the things we have going at the academy when the guys speak to this gun, they don't say it's a polymer gun Mm -hmm. because the frame of this gun is actually steel. Okay, it's a steel gun that you put polymer grip and all the other, I mean, you literally are putting a slide on and grip on, and you can just change everything out the way you want because you just, the guts of it are this small, and I mean, we're talking small. The, the guts of it, the actual gun is a steel, it looks like just parts. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's, it's, it is, it's actually genius is what it is. Oh, thank you. It is, it's really something. And the other part is when people go, yeah, 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 how's it shoot? How's it shoot? Uh, it's a lot of fun. It shoots very well. Um, in fact, the 45, um, Max Michelle, who is our pro team shooter, was the first time he shot it, he was uh, dumbfounded at how well it was shooting out of the factory, mm-hmm. stock gun, um, 45 caliber. We have video of Max uh, doing a drill with this. Reaction time, drawing and shooting, six shots, reload, six shots, reload, six shots on three different targets, 5.2 seconds. Yep. You know, and you know, the thing is, if, if you get a, one of these pistols, everybody will be able to shoot just like Max Michelle. Oh, of course. <laughs> Yeah, right. You believe that one. Okay. John, thank you so much for being here and showing us this. This is very cool stuff. And, of course, all this is uh, the information at the Six Hour website, sixhour.com. Yes, it is. All right. Thanks so much. All right. We'll be right back in a minute with more gun talk.
At Double Tap Ammunition, we hand inspect every round that we make, and we use only the best components to give you the best ammunition on the market. Try us out at www.doubletapammo.com and use the promo code GUNTALK for 10% off your order. Experts agree that the low-range, variable rifle scope is best for most situations. Now, Trijicon offers a stunning 1-6 to six power variable in the AccuPoint line. Featuring a battery-free illuminated reticle, superior glass clarity, and rugged construction, it's the one scope you need for hunting and competition. Long eye relief, aircraft-grade aluminum housing, manual brightness override. See the 1-6 to six power AccuPoint at Trijicon.com. Trijicon.com. The XDM 3.8 Compact from Springfield Armory is two guns in one. Use as your concealed carry gun with a compact magazine and use the extended magazine for home defense. Carry 13 rounds of 9mm in the compact magazine and a whopping 19 rounds in the extended magazine. To see the entire family of Springfield Armory XDM pistols, go to SpringfieldArmory.com. That's SpringfieldArmory.com. For 36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org. You got your carry permit. And that's good. But you know you could use more training. Get the DVDs, which have what you need. Springfield Armory presents Concealed Carry 1 and Concealed Carry 2 with Bata Group. Learn specific concealed carry skills from Top Gun fighting trainers. Get trained. Be prepared. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com That's ShopGunTalk.com Accurate, powerful, consistent. At Double Tap Ammunition, we offer 364 loads in 83 calibers that give you exactly what you've been looking for. Try us out at www.doubletapammo.com and use the promo code GUNTALK for 10% off your order. Welcome back to Gun Talk. We are with you again. It is, uh, we're in the Guns and Gear studio. Uh, we're actually doing this in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, having a ball over here. And we're sitting here with Nick Desenza from Stag Arms. And, and Nick, you brought in some pretty cool looking guns here and fun to shoot, right? Absolutely. So w- what, what makes these so special? Uh, this is actually the latest addition to uh, our models we offer this year. These are 9mm carbines, which is our first delve into pistol caliber carbines. Really? Now, okay, for those who don't know, we're talking about an AR-15 type platform, but they're shooting 9mm. And you got, now is this a mag uh, that you guys are providing? Yes, those are actually uh, like a Colt style 9mm mag. We offer them in 10, 20, and 32 round capacity. Oh, man. And of course, 9mm is not going to have any recoil in this gun. No, that's the beauty of it. Um, you can take the same gun, whether it be pistol, rifle, and head to the range. Uh, knowing the problem with ammunition now and the cost of ammunition, it helps keep that price down. Right. All right, so I know that in the past, uh, I actually have had some experience with uh, companies making 9mm or ARs in pistol calibers. Troublesome. H- hard to get them to run. They just had problems getting them going. How did you guys get past that? Uh, well, we did use a dedicated 9mm lower, so it did take um, a bunch of testing to get it right because anything we do offer, we offer left-handed. So there was engineering that had to be done that Ooh, um, sure. n- really no other company had done at that point with a 9mm carbine. So it took a little while um, finding upgraded triggers to also work with that as opposed to like the mil-spec trigger that we do use was a little bit difficult. And we huh. did find that some of the upgraded two-stage triggers will work, but they're is select ones that will and others that won't. Okay. So what's it like to shoot a 9? Talk me through the whole thing. Well, like you like you said before, there's really low recoil. Um, the beauty of this is it does lock open on the last round, and um, you know that it's going to lock open. That bull carrier kind of slams home because of the heavier mass that it has. So right. when you fire that last round, you do know you were empty. Huh. Okay. So what are the two models you have here? Well, the first one here is our Model 9. I actually brought the left-handed variant, so we would refer to that as a 9L. Um, it's basically our strip down model here it's got a diamond head 
VRS handguard. It's their drop-in handguard. Right. Standard A2 flash hider here. Um, standard A2 pistol grip and stock. We just tried to keep the price down there, kept it optic ready because, as you know, there's a million and one companies that offer accessories now. So yep. we kind of left it open for other people to accessorize it how it, they it, see basically fit. Basically, it's a flat top. You can put whatever you want to put on there. Exactly. Anything from iron sights to any kind of optic you want ready to go. Sure. Um, and that's the left-handed version. Correct. As you notice, it does have an oversized shell deflector because those 9 millimeter cases kind of eject at a different angle. So ah, okay. Most people look at it and say, well, what's going on there? It's just an sure. oversized shell deflector. To, to keep the brass out of your face. Absolutely. Okay. We did put, um, it doesn't come standard with an ambi charge and handle, but because this was a left-handed model, we'd like to feature some of our upgrades that we offer for left-handed shooters, right. one of them being this ambi charging handle. As you see, the latches are kind of oversized here. So I like it. as a shooter, you'd know if you have a scope or something here, it's sometimes a little tricky to get your fingers behind right, that. So right. we utilize that with the oversized latches. Uh, we also offer an ambi selector, and a company named Norgon offers an ambi magazine catch, so you can do it on either side. Yeah, honestly, anybody who's real serious about uh, having a carbine probably needs to be thinking about having an ambi uh, bolt. Or a, uh, what am I thinking of here? Charging hand. Charging hand, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, just because if you're switching over to weak side, it can be, now you're trying to reach over, or you got to come off the gun with the other hand, sure. and it's uh, it just... It makes operations a whole lot easier. Absolutely. Okay, so what's this model? The other model here is our Model 9T. This is a slightly upgraded model here. Also uses, utilizes one of uh, Diamond Head's handguards. It's their VRST handguard. Mm -hmm. It is free-floating, and it is modular, which um, is a beautiful thing because you can attach your rail sections at 3, 6, and 9 o'clock, whether they be short or long rail sections. Um, you have your rail on the top here for mounting op optics. Um, flip up front and rear sights. It's their patented diamond aperture. We've got a lot of great right. feedback from people on that. Sometimes it's a love them or hate them type thing, but most of our feedback is people really enjoy them. Well, if you don't like them, you can swap them out for heaven's sake. Sure, absolutely. You know? um, we've actually used this handguard on a couple different rifles, too. Um, if you remember the old M16 handguards, those triangular handguards, mm -hmm. they had a real nice feel to them. So when they designed these, they kind of based it off of that design and tapered it a bit and modernized it so you could attach your rail sections and put these finger grooves so that there's a bunch of different grip styles out these days. So no matter where you are, your fingers kind of find a sweet spot on there so you can grip it and right. handle it. Okay. So, obviously, we got uh, the, the nines. Now, one of the things that Stag has been doing is offering a lot of parts, aftermarket parts, mm -hmm. uh, bolts, bolt carriers, that type of thing. Correct. What's going on with that? What, why are people wanting to, are they upgrading? Are they changing? Um, a lot of people like the M16 style carriers because there's a little bit more mass there and a little bit more meat at the back of the bolt carrier. But as far as the upgrades we're offering now, we're doing nickel Teflon and chroming. Um, as you know, as an AR shooter, the direct gas guns blow a lot of carbon and fouling back into the receiver here. It's a nice way of saying they get dirty. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> dirty quick, and they, they can get hard to clean if you don't clean them that often. Uh -huh. So the beauty of those materials is um, if you're just shooting the ones that day, you can pretty much just take the bolt carrier out with a little bit of solvent or just a rag, wipe all that carbon and fouling off there or... If you are putting high volume of rounds down there, it's pretty easy to clean compared to your standard manganese phosphate coating. What, what makes them easier to clean? Um, it's just the properties in the uh, application of the nickel Teflon or the chrome. It's just, um, it, it's adds, it adds lubricity to the bowl carrier, too, so it, its function is a little bit more reliable there when it's dirty. That gets me to a question. Uh, how much should you lube an AR just to keep it running? Because I, I hear different people say, oh, I don't over lube it. Other people say, no, no, it needs to shoot wet. Well, it's... It would really depend on the volume of shooting, but you don't want to leave it soaking wet because that's going to start to catch all that carbon and fouling, and it'll build up in there. Um, it's kind of like anything else. You just you want enough oil to keep it smooth and functioning and right. not too much so that it's a catch-all for dirt, dust, and so, grime. So uh, you know, if you over lube it and you gum it up, then put less on it next time. Absolutely. <laughs> so there you go. Now, obviously, you have the adjustable uh, stocks on these. You have the, the options are incredible. It's just what you have with the whole line. Tell you what, hold that thought. I want to take a quick break. When I come back, I want to talk about one of the, the key features, I think, of Stag Arms is the whole idea that you make left-handed ARs. Sure. Because, uh, to, I, obviously, you may or may not know, I shoot from the left shoulder. Shoot handguns right-handed, you know, long guns left-handed. That way I always have an alibi ready to go at any given time. Because, you know, it's a darn poor shooter that doesn't have an alibi available at any given time. So there, you, there you go. All right, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more gun talk. We're doing this uh, interesting thing. If you want to check out what we're up to, we're actually shooting this in the studio for Guns and Gear. And we're putting this video up. You go to our YouTube channel, just look for Gun Talk there, and you can watch us doing Gun Talk Radio. All right, you know what we do during the breaks? Uh, we talk about guns. Big surprise, right, Nick? 
Yeah. <laughs> we went out to dinner last night, and uh, there were a lot of things we could have talked about, but we ended up talking about guns again. As always. Customer service. Uh, I love it. Uh, what are the more, more interesting questions you get with customer service? That could be a pretty long story. Absolutely. Um, I mean, it, it runs the gamut as far as questions. Uh, a lot of times people want to know what our future plans are and uh, what we're going to offer because, like I said, we do cater to the left-handed market, so there is a large segment of the population that's concerned with what lefties are going to have next or what we're going to do next for left-handed shooters. Well, the company's not really that old. No, actually, uh, we're going to hit our 12-year anniversary in about two weeks. Okay. Did it start with the whole left-handed aspect? Uh, yeah, actually, the owner is a left-handed shooter, and as you know, for closing in on 60 years now, it's pretty much a right-handed world as far as the gun world's concerned. Mm -hmm. um, Especially the, ARs. ARs and M16s originally were all right-handed. There really wasn't a left-handed option, so right. uh, the owner being a left-handed shooter, left-eye dominant, it kind of made sense with his capabilities and stuff to uh, delve into a lefty market, so with a little bit of time and engineering... Um, couple of different design changes like the ejection port door having to flip up as opposed to down because of where the controls are on the gun. Oh, um, made okay. some changes there, and instead of having all that gas and brass come across the face of a lefty shooter, it's now mm -hmm. ejecting the other way, so it's a more pleasant shooting environment for him now. And then other than that, I mean, it is a standard AR. You've got your controls, although you have the ambi controls. On Correct. There's a few little tweaks to the gun. The barrel extension actually has it's uh, an ambi barrel extension because that bolt is camming from the opposite direction. So there's some cuts that need to be made oh, different there. Okay. Uh, the bolt carrier is kind of just a mirror print as well as the upper, like I said, besides that ejection port door mm -hmm. cover here having a flip up. Right. Okay. So whether you want it right or left, you got it available from Stag, uh, from... I mean, you guys have come a long way in 12 years. I, I really kind of thought you'd been around a lot longer than that. Yeah, it's actually 12 years. Um, it was the nature of the market as it was in the last decade or so was a little bit beneficial to us because <laughs> ARs really went through a boom. So um, we didn't offer that many different chamberings at first because just the demand for 556 period on an AR platform was through the roof. And just being a new company as it was and trying to keep up with that demand was tough enough. But just getting them out the door. Correct. As time went on and uh, people, you know, we try to take as much customer feedback as we can and people asking for you know, larger calibers to hunt with or something that's a pistol caliber, right. 30 cal and larger, which is, that's been our number one question for a decade now is when are you coming out with a 308? Okay, let me ask you, when are you coming out with a 308? Oh, I can neither confirm or deny that date <laughs> or if we've tested, but uh, there there is always testing and plans in the works. And I have to say, I'm probably one of the biggest proponents there of seeing it. I would, I would love to see it happen. That sounds great. Of course, you know, you get so many neat benefits from going to a 308 for a hunter, it sure. really opens up a, a whole world. And there are a lot of people, of course, even in 223, because we have good ammo avail available now, mm -hmm. a lot of people hunt with their ARs, don't they? Yeah. Um, a lot of the states, the large game, you can't hunt with 5.56, so we do offer two different models in 6.8 SPC. Oh. Uh, we have one that's kind of optic ready. It's our Model 5. It has an A2 front sight on it, but we kind of left the rear sight off in case they want to put a flip up or an optic or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we also offer a 20-inch crown barrel version, which is our Model 7. Um, that is also optic ready. Uh, the 7 actually comes with a two-stage trigger on it, so it's a little bit lighter. That's more set up for specifically hunting. Okay. So that's one of the options there. We did also come out um, with a 300 blackout upgrade this year. So any of our standard 16-inch 5.56 carbines, you can for $50 upgrade, and we'll put a 300 blackout barrel on there. And as you know, most of the components are the same, so wow. I made it pretty simple for people if they want to cover it. That's a very attractive price, too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Holy cow. All right, for more information, uh, I know you got the website. Is it Stag Arms? Stagarms.com. Stagarms.com. You can look at the right. You can look at the left. You can look at the barrel uh, options. You can look at the caliber options. And now the 9 millimeter, which is very sweet. I mean, that just, I mean, come on, 9 millimeter ammo is cheap, uh, not much recoil, and pure fun. Absolutely. I mean, really. You know, just, just why would you not do this is one of those deals. It is fantastic. And for the families that do have the lefty and righty shooters, it's nice. That's kind of why we offer those ambi controls there so that if you don't buy a second rifle, you can at least just swap the uppers off and use your same lower there. Perfect. Nick, thanks so much. Appreciate you. you being here, man. All righty. I appreciate you being here. That's going to wrap up this hour. If you're going to be staying with us, by all means, do that. If you have to leave us, make it a point. Go out and do some shooting this week. Take somebody with you. And remember... You are an ambassador for the shooting sports. Conduct yourself accordingly. I'm Tom Gresham. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next time.